I've been a reader my whole life. On and off, mostly off. When I was a kid, I loved reading, avid reader, just devoured books. When I got into school, I just stopped reading for fun entirely. And then when I got back to college, I fell back in love. And throughout that process, I've made a bunch of mistakes. And it's really easy to fall into some traps with reading, especially when you're watching videos online about other people who are reading. I think there are some negative patterns that you can fall into and that I definitely fell into. I wanted to talk about some of them today in the hopes that maybe if you're finding yourself in one of them, you'll be able to correct. So I think probably the easiest trap to fall into for me is falling into the idea that reading isn't for fun. And this is exactly what school teaches you to think about reading. You are told, read this chapter so that you can participate in the discussion on Friday. It's not read this chapter because it's an amazing piece of a book. That's kind of left behind. It's read this chapter so that you can answer these questions and prove that you're doing the work. It's a transaction. Now to me, this completely misses the reason that I at least fell in love with reading. As a kid, I didn't care about the transactional value. I didn't care about whether or not I would do better in school or get a better job because I was reading more. I was reading because I loved it, because it was fun. It was a good way to explore new worlds and to learn about our world. That's all that it was. It was something that was inherently fun and exciting. And I think as teenagers and as young adults and as adults, we really have to fight to keep that childlike mindset sometimes. It's really easy to lose it. It's really easy to fall into the transactional adulthood. Everything that you do is, you know, to move forward in society. When it's okay to take some time and have fun and explore. Counterintuitively, what I've found is that this exploration time results in greater progress. If I'm reading for the purpose of doing well in school, I'll do it as fast as I can and I won't draw connections to other things. But if I'm reading for the purpose of exploration, well then I'll draw all these different connections and then eventually that'll align with my schoolwork and I'll blow some project out of the water because I've already explored that and I, I can draw this amazing connection to another topic that I just wouldn't have done if I'd never read. And so the biggest mistake with reading is not having fun with it. And to fight against it, I think sometimes you need to remind yourself about that origin, about the childlike mind and reading to explore and the value of exploration. Another mistake that I make with reading is boxing myself into the things that I'm comfortable with. Not because I necessarily prefer them, but just because I'm more comfortable with them. Over time, this led to a perception that certain books were more valuable than others. That is, I would only read nonfiction books, especially when I was starting out, because it just felt like they were more valuable, whatever that means, than fiction books. And it took me a while to get out of that comfort zone, and when I did get out of that comfort zone and I started to read different types of books, I absolutely loved it. I think one of the most valuable, if you will, books that I ever read was my first poetry anthology. And the reason it was so valuable to me was that it was like nothing that I'd ever read before. So here I was doing this very familiar activity, reading, and I was reading something that was pushing my mind in completely different ways than it had ever been pushed before. And I think when treating reading as this exploratory activity, it's important to step out of your comfort zone sometimes. Yeah, I'm a sucker for sci-fi. I love sci-fi. Most of the fiction that I read is sci-fi. But every now and then, I try and pick up a fiction book that I would just not read otherwise, whether it's on the recommendation of a friend or some bestsellers list or whatever the case may be, I'll say, hey, this is not a book that I would normally read, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And more often than not, I really enjoy it. Related to the idea of reading certain books as being this valuable activity in a transactional sense, I had a really hard time starting a book and then stopping it. When I think about the times over the last few years in which my reading has come screeching to a halt. That is, I would be reading a lot, and then suddenly I would only be reading every other day or a couple times a week. It was generally when I had one of these books. I thought it would be valuable to read. I started reading it, and it wasn't valuable to read, and it wasn't fun to read, and I forced myself to continue doing it at a snail's pace because I was stubborn. I couldn't really come up with any reason for why I had to finish every book. It just felt like I had an obligation to do so. 
But this doesn't really make sense. There's no rational reason for it. It's just this fear that I'm giving up. But that's not true. I'm not giving up. I'm putting it down and maybe I'll come back to it later when it's more appropriate. Or maybe I won't and that's okay. I found that for me, I actually do come back to these books fairly often. I wasn't enjoying it because of where I was at the time. Maybe it was a really technical book and I was in a really technical part of my semester and that part of my brain was just exhausted. But then the summer comes around and I get this urge to learn more technical things and I return to that book and I really enjoy it. So it's not giving up, it's nothing like that. Um, and it's good because you get to pick up another book and you get to explore more and you get to continue to enjoy it. It's supposed to be fun. If you're really struggling and really hurting, chances are you would be better off with a, a different book. The final mistake is one that I've relatively recently identified in my life. And I think it's really easy for reading to be a solitary activity because you're reading on your own and you're wrestling with these ideas in your head. And then where do they go? So some people keep a journal, some people write reviews and so on. But for me, I've always found that conversation is the best way for me to solidify my takes on things. That is, if I read a book and it's got all these ideas kind of floating around in my head, if I want to solidify them, I have to talk to someone about them. And one of the biggest mistakes that I've made while reading is not talking to people and letting those ideas kind of float away. You only have access to one viewpoint. You only have access to the viewpoint that is influenced and biased by your history and by the very narrow slice of the world that you belong to, your family, your friends, your background, and it's not necessarily right. And the only way to figure out what actually is right, in my opinion, is to listen to the people who have radically different perspectives or even slightly different perspectives and understand how you might be wrong or how they might be wrong. And I think engaging in good faith rather than putting your egos and having some battle about it is really critical here. It's not about whether or not your background is right or their background is right. It's about, okay, is this a way that the world could become better. And if it is, we should pursue it, regardless of whether that intuitively feels good or intuitively feels bad to one of us. So I think these conversations are really critical, and I think they're especially critical in the sense of treating reading as this activity of exploration, this thing that you're doing in order to learn more about the world. And what better way to do that than to read, get some ideas in your head, and then bounce those ideas off of different people who might respond to them very differently than you. But that's something that I've only recently started doing and that I want to do a lot more of. Uh, and not doing that, I think, was a mistake. For the first few years, reading was a very solitary thing for me, other than, you know, what I said into a camera. I'd now like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. I've been an Audible member for over two years now. And during that time, I've seen my membership get more and more valuable. When I started out, I got a credit every month for any audiobook in their massive collection. And that was super worth it to me because I love listening to audiobooks, especially when I'm walking or when I'm traveling. But recently, Audible has given their members access to the Plus Catalog. The Plus Catalog is full of things like podcasts, guided exercise sessions, guided meditation sessions. And so for me, this has just made my membership that much more valuable. This month, I want to recommend to you the audiobook Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. You might know Andy Weir for The Martian, his debut novel, and Project Hail Mary is an amazing follow-up. It's not a sequel, it's its own project, it stands alone in its own right, but it's an awesome work of sci-fi. I don't want to spoil too much here, but the, the way the story unfolds really drew me in, uh, and it was something that I just couldn't stop once I started. And uh, if you like sci-fi, I wouldn't be shocked if you were the same. I think this is an awesome work. And you can start listening today with a 30-day Audible trial, which will get you access to thousands and thousands of all-you-can-listen audiobooks, to guided meditations, exercise sessions, podcasts, and more original content in the Plus catalog. You can visit audible.com slash johnfish or text code johnfish to 500-500 to sign up now. That's audible.com slash johnfish or text johnfish to 500-500. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, it inspired you to pick up a book, one that you'll actually enjoy, and have fun with, and be able to explore something with, uh, and maybe talk to someone about, and see where things go from there. My name is John Fish. Feel free to subscribe if you want to, if you like the video. No worries if not. I will see you again soon. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourself. Peace.